Welcome to this lecture on the topic of creating a sustainable working life for all ages. The possibility of working is affected by various factors and on different levels. The possibility of working does not solely depend on the individual, but also on managers in organizations and enterprises that shape and create the conditions for employees in the workplace and the working environment through decisions and measures. These measures may, for example, be about leadership, formal and in informal leaders, working hours, access to competence development, climate, organizational culture and attitudes toward ages. But the framework for the individual's possibility of working is created on the societal level through society's decisions on laws, regulations, pension and social security conditions. The laws and regulations of society also rules the organizations and managers' possibility of offering measures for their employees. This theoretical model, the Swage model, that will be described in this lecture, visualizes the complexity regarding work conditions and is thought to work as a tool in the quest of creating healthy and sustainable workplaces. The aim of the Swage model is to increase knowledge and understanding by visualizing measures and individuals' needs that can be used to create a sustainable working life for all ages on different levels in society. The model is supposed to be a tool to meet new and changed demand put on individuals, on organizations and enterprises and on our society, where many elderly employees stay in working life until an older age. We are going to talk about sustainable working life for all ages. But what does sustainable working life mean? If we look up sustainable in a dictionary, it states capable of being sustained. In other words, maintained at length without interruption or weakening. Of relating to or being a method of harvesting or using a resource so that the resource is not depleted or permanently damaged or of or relating to a lifestyle involving the use of sustainable methods. But how will we manage sustainability for as many as possible? Well, we are each other's working environment, so therefore our starting point will be me and you. How do you feel in your work situation? Are you in sound health or could you feel better? Pretty much the same factors make most of us feel good in our work situation and we therefore need to work with those in order to make working life sustainable for everyone. The second area of interest is age. What do we mean when we talk about age and aging? Is it possible to have more than one age? We will return to these questions later on. Achieving a sustainable working life is complex. When beginning to examine a question or problem, it's like wearing a blindfold and feeling your way forward. You can go into deep detail in your study, just like the scientists in the picture. However, in order to understand how everything is connected, you need to take a step back, put all the pieces of the puzzle from different studies together in order to put together the, the complex bigger picture and how everything is connected. What measures are needed for different issues? Simply put, to be able to see the elephant in the room. During research of sustainable working life since 2003, we realized that age in relation to working life is an important factor to whether employees will be able to and want to work in an extended working life. One can ask oneself, what does age have to do with working life? Let me show you this wage model, which has been developed through a grounded theory method and is based on research through decades. We can use this wage model as a tool to create sustainable working life for all ages. The wage model is to be used as a framework to understand different issues in maintaining a sustainable working life, as well as a toolbox to use when working to promote sustainability in the workplace. 
to easier understand how and what we need to work with and how to find solutions to the issues. The SWAGE model is an explanatory model regarding predictors and measures in working environment and working life. It includes the details, the knowledge that, have, that has been accumulated during many years of scientific research regarding working environment and measures at different levels and how these relate to aging. The SWAGE model is useful as a basis for risk assessment and improvement possibilities in the practical work in order to make working life sustainable for all ages, since the measures are sorted into areas of needs. In other words, it's a well-organized toolbox in order to easily find the right measure for an issue. Predictors for a sustainable working life. The predictors for a sustainable working life are associated to different levels these levels interact and affect each other. Actions and measures to make working life sustainable need to take place at different levels. These different levels are macro level, which is the societal level, where laws and regulations are created, as well as social welfare systems, such as the pension system and social insurance systems that affects how we work and how work is organized in the workplace. The second level, meso level, is the organizational and enterprise level, in other words, the workplace. This is where the manager decides how the workplace is designed and organized, and which measures and actions can be taken to make working life sustainable. However, one of the manager's main tasks is ensuring the finances are sound in the organizational company so that there's a profit, or at least that it breaks even. Therefore, the organizational company will need financial incentives to keep their employees until an older age, where knowledge, competence, physical and mental ability are valued in relation to productivity. The third level, micro level, is the individual level. As previous, previously stated, we are each other's working environment and we together are society and each other's co-workers. Therefore, we, we affect the organizational and enterprise level. But what makes individuals like you and me able to and want to participate in working life? What makes us prioritize to keep working in an extended working life or to consider leaving working life and retire when we are elderly employees? We will return to the individual level later on. Now we're going to talk about age and let's take you as an example. Can you identify it with this depiction of age? Where are you situated on the staircase? Are you old or young? Well, how old is elderly? During research and interviews with managers, employees, etc., it has been obvious that age is a rather sensitive subject. For example, participants in research projects have been asked to write their age on their name tags. Everyone will write their name with no objections, but when asked to add their age after the name, some participants experienced this as very sensitive information and objected to why there was a need to focus on age. In a conducted survey, one question was, how old do you feel? The results were fascinating. 55% stated that they felt younger than their actual age, in other words, their chronological age. Only 6% of participants stated that they felt older than their actual chronological age. When examining different age groups closer, it was apparent that among those of 67 years of age, 81% of respondents felt younger than their actual age, and no one felt older. Among responding 22-year-olds, none felt younger than their actual age, 
but 62% felt older. It turns out that feeling older than your actual age is most common until 24 years of age. Between 25 and 37 years of age, most feel like their actual age, and among those aged 38 years and above, over 50% felt younger than their actual age. And the older the respondents, the larger proportion, proportion felt younger than their actual age. The number of elderly citizens in society is increasing, and therefore we need to talk about postponing the pension age. The question of how to make working life sustainable is therefore at issue and of great importance. When postponing the retirement age, will employees be able to work until an older age, and what age is that? Can age be defined in different ways? Well. When talking about postponing the pension age, we are talking about chronological age. In other words, how many birthdays we have celebrated. When we talk about chronological age, we measure how many years have passed since our birth. But maybe functional age is of greatest importance in the issue of managing our working life. Functional age is of course affected by chronological age. But functional age is above all a combination of the biological age, social age and cognitive age. Our biological aging is based on our genetics, how our organs age and when our hair turns grey, it all depends on the DNA passed down by our parents. But our biological age is also affected by lifestyle, our diet, exercise, smoking, drug use, etc. But it is also affected but what our working life has been like, what work situations we've been subjected to. A heavy physical workload makes us age faster, biologically speaking. The working environment affects our biological aging. A stressful working environment also makes us age faster in a biological sense. Social age is how we are perceived in different life phases. We are seen one way when we are children and adolescents, another way when we are adults, and yet another way when we are perceived as elderly employees on the brink of retirement. Based on these perceived life phases, we are assigned different characteristics through our life. Different stereotypes and attitudes are applied on people in different social ages. Cognitive age is about cognition, memory, ability to learn new skills, etc., and how this changes with age. Children learn in one way and older people in another way. Children, for example, usually can learn a new language quite easily, whereas learning a new language can be quite hard for an older person. An older person that possesses knowledge within an area will have less problem learning new information associated to this area of present knowledge but it can be quite harder or take longer time to learn something completely new that is not associated to present knowledge for an older person. It's easier to learn by doing. Cognitive age is also associated with wisdom and knowledge of experience. Can elderly employees cope in an extended working life? According to studies conducted, 64% of employees aged 55 to 74 years of age stated that their age made them cope better in their work. They could use the experience and knowledge gained through their life, maybe in different organizations and workplaces, in their work to cope better with tasks and environment. 9% of respondents aged 55 to 74 years of age, stated that they could cope less with their work due to their age. This was mainly the response from employees in a physically demanding work situation or in a stressful and mentally demanding work situation. These employees felt worn out to a greater extent, which made them cope less with their work. In other words, 
Whether an employee is able to cope in an extended working life may depend on the type of work situation, work tasks and work environment they are subjected to. When trying to make working life sustainable for all ages, we cannot disregard age. We need to include age and how age can be defined in different ways. That is why these four different ages are part of the SWAGE model. Chronological age, biological age, social age and cognitive age. Are we able to work until an age as old as possible in all occupations? What factors in the work environment makes it possible for us to want to and be able to participate in an extended working life? Being able to and wanting to work. Is there a difference between the two? Yes. We need to both be able to and want to participate in working life to work until an older age. Because just being able to do something does not mean wanting to do it and vice versa. As you can see in the diagrams, based on a survey with 11,902 respondents, 43% stated that they could work until 65 years of age or longer, but only 22% stated that they wanted to work until 65 years of age or longer. So, there's an apparent difference between wanting to work and being able to work in an extended working life. Well, you might think, what differences are there between wanting to and being able to work? What associates with wanting to and being able to work after 65 years of age. That is what we were wondering and therefore conducted analysis to examine this. It turned out that self-rated health and diagnosis, personal finances as well as family, leisure time and personal social environment was significant both to being able to and wanting to work in an extended working life. But other factors differed. What was above all associated with being able to work after 65 years of age were the mental environment, the physical working environment, as well as working hours, work pace and time for recuperation, but also competence, knowledge and development opportunities. Associated with wanting to work after 65 years of age were attitudes within the organisations, uh, from managers, etc., leadership, participation and support, as well as grounds for discrimination. Furthermore, motivation, stimulating tasks and work satisfaction that the core in work was perceived as interesting and motivating. This is how wanting to work beyond 65 years of age differs from being able to work beyond 65 years of age. The conducted analysis showed that factors associated with being able to and wanting to work in an extended working life can be grouped into nine different areas. These nine areas are associated to the four different ways of defining age, which you can see in the SWAGE model. A lot of research has been conducted to examine different measures and actions that can be taken in order to make working life sustainable for all ages. We have also examined this in our studies and have divided the measures into four different areas. These are measures for sound physical, mental, work health and recuperation, measures for sound personal finances and social security, measures for social inclusion, participation and trust, as well as measures for increased motivation, development of skills and knowledge. We will return to these measures further on.
when making big decisions in life, different considerations will take place. One will weigh pros and cons against each other in order to make a decision with the best possible outcome. The same considerations take place when deciding whether to work in an extended working life or retire from working life. We have perceived four different considerations that are apparent in the question of working in an extended working life or to retire from working life. The first consideration is the own health and well-being in relation to physical work environment, mental work environment and time for recuperation. If these are sound and sufficient in the work situation and the employee experience well-being and good health in relation to the physical work environment the mental work environment and has sufficient time for recuperation. The employee will feel satisfied in the work situation and be more likely to keep working in an extended working life. However, if the employee thinks their health and well-being will gain from retiring and that they will have a better chance of recuperation as a pensioner, this will have great importance when deciding whether to work in an extended working life or retire from working life. A lot of people do not participate in working life today. The ill health and rates of sick leaves are rather high. It turns out that the most prominent area of diagnosis for sick leave was related to mental health. In other words, mental illness, syndromes and behavioural disorders. The second most prominent area of diagnosis for sick leave was related to disorders in the musculoskeletal systems and connective tissue. During spring 2017, we conducted a study with 11,902 employees responding to 104 questions of how they experienced the work situation the health, etc. In this study, 65% of respondents stated that the current occupation is too mentally demanding for them to be able to keep working after 65 years of age. 33% of respondents stated that the current occupation is too physically demanding for them to be able to keep working after 65 years of age. In the study, it turned out that every fourth respondent had, or had previously had, a diagnosed illness or injury that to some extent was caused by their work. The large proportion of ill health and injury caused by working life means that we need to view physical and mental ill health caused by working life as one of our largest public health issues. What the employees in the study stated would increase their possibility of working until an older age for this part of the SWAGE model factors were decrease of working hours, more time for recuperation between work shifts, change in organisation of working hours, decrease of physical work demands, decrease of mental work demands and increased variation and rotation between different work tasks. As previously mentioned, there are four areas and measures in the SWAGE model associated to the different parts of the model. These areas of measures have been developed based on results from previous studies conducted by other researchers and we have conducted registry studies, surveys, intervention projects, one-on-one -on -one interviews and focus group in surveys. The participants in these studies have been employees both below and above 65 years of age, managers, HR, union representatives, occup occupational health care, etc. But what are the measures for good physical and mental work health and recuperation so that the employee can and want to work until an older age and to make working life sustainable for all ages? We have found the following measures. 
time for recuperation during work shifts, time for recuperation between work shifts, ergonomic aids, an organizational culture that supports use of ergonomic aids, decreased tear through rotation and change of work tasks, a limited amount of work tasks to decrease stress, a balance of demand and control in the work situation, to eliminate the risk of threats and violence, encourage physical activity to maintain mental and physical health, and breaks to cater the significance of diet to maintain good health so that employees do not skip lunch, etc. Determinant factors associated with a sustainable working life for all ages and measures to achieve this are grouped into four different areas. As you can see in the model, it's like four slices of cake. The first area is associated with our biological aging, in other words, our bodily aging process. How we perceive our own health, diagnosis, chronic illness, etc., in relation to our physical work environment with physically demanding work tasks, repetitive strain, risk of injury, heat, cold, toxic substances and other factors in the physical work environment, but also our mental work environment with stress, control and demand, threats and violence. Furthermore, how our biological age works in relation to the working hours, schedule, work pace and possibility of taking breaks, as well as time for recuperation. If an employee feels that they suffer ill health because of the physical work environment, the mental work environment or the time for recuperation, this will affect their ability and wish to participate in working life until an older age. This is what employees first consider when deciding whether they can and want to work in an extended working life or to retire early. Associated with these factors are measures and actions that can be taken on the organizational and societal levels, for example, by regulating work environment through laws and guidelines, ergonomic aids, and ensuring that available aids are protective and protective devices are used to make working life sustainable. What needs to be taken into consideration is that different risks are present in different ages. For example, sight and hearing ability, as well as the ability to move rapidly, generally decreases with biological age. According to statistics, Elderly employees run a greater risk of being subjected to work-related accidents. An elderly person needs longer time to recuperate after an injury. Therefore, it's of great importance to ponder on these different parts of the SWAGE model. The second consideration to work in an extended working life or retire is associated with a personal financial situation. What the personal financial situation looks like with salary from working life affects whether the employee decides to leave working life early or to keep working in an extended working life, depending on if they feel they can afford to retire or if they feel that by working for longer they can afford a higher standard maybe to travel or to refurbish the house when they do decide to retire. Others may feel that they can afford to retire, that the pension is sufficient to live on and therefore choose to retire from working life. To examine this area, the personal financial situation more closely for people aged 55 to 64 years and who participate in working life, we conducted a study of Sweden's total population aged 55 to 64 years. 
We were interested in what happened in 2008 when Sweden's social insurance policy was changed and it got harder to go on sick leave. What happened in this age group? Well, predominantly, short-term educated women who received sickness benefits in 2004 before the social insurance reformation. In 2011, it was still mostly short-term educated women who received sickness benefits, but also short-term educated men, where the sickness benefits had decreased. At the same time, it was this group that above all had increased the early retirement withdrawal. It seemed that to some extent these people were pushed from one to another social security system. It did not quite succeed to bring back employees on sick leave through making it harder to receive sickness benefits. Instead, it made those employees pay for their own early retirement with smaller pension. If we examine the increase of early retirement withdrawal between the years 2004 to 2011, it was predominantly female employees in the production industry who had increased their early retirement withdrawal. Though the early retirement had increased for this population, it did not reach the level of early retirement withdrawal for men employed as CEO and managers. In this group, no change of early retirement withdrawal was apparent between 2004 and 2011. When talking about this area of measures, personal finances and financial incentives, it may be a point to take measures to ensure sound personal finances and socioeconomic security for individuals. This can be achieved through physical and mental work environment that prevents work injury and employees being prematurely worn out and risk falling out of working life. By ensuring this, employees will be able to work until an older age, earning higher pension, and therefore this is a financial incentive. A reasonable wage development, irrespective of age, being able to afford to decrease work hours when needed, taking into consideration that people have varying needs of taking breaks and time for recuperation in different ages, and for some periods, people may need to work less but still need to cope financially. Employees that are employable with updated competence and knowledge. Organizations are changing constantly. An elderly employee needs to have updated competence in order to stay employable and not risk being pushed out of working life. Also, if an employee has suffered an occupational injury or disease, it's important to have up-to-date competence and be able to take on different work tasks. The second part of this wage model, or the second slice of cake, if you will, that is associated with a sustainable working life, is the second consideration to work in an extended working life or to retire, namely the personal financial situation. Whether we can afford to retire from working life or whether we need to work until an older age to cope financially. Maybe we will be able to afford something we have longed for by working for a few extra years. In this way, it's a financial incentive. The personal financial situation is associated with chronological age. Chronological age is what the social security systems are based on namely the number of birthdays we have celebrated. This is the only area associated with a sustainable working life that is related to chronological age. Yet, in the debate of postponing the retirement age, chronological age is most predominantly discussed, whether the retirement age should be at 67 or 69 years of age, etc. Sometimes different ways of defining age and aging are forgotten even though they may be even more important regarding whether employees can and want to participate in an extended working life. 
When debating retirement, we need to remember that the number of years we have lived is not the most important factor, but rather how we coped and have coped in our working life. I.e., not only chronological age must be taken into account, but also biological age, cognitive age and social age, in order to make working life sustainable and to make employees able to and want to be employable in an extended working life. The third consideration when deciding whether to work in an extended working life or to retire early is related to the opportunity of social participation, support and inclusion in a community. If we feel that we are part of a social community, everything is a bit more fun. If we find this in our working life, where we feel included and receive support from co-workers, managers, clients, customers, etc., we might want to stay in this such social situation to work and therefore to work in an extended working life. However, if we find that we do not feel included in a part of the social community at work, but instead have a strong social support from family, friends, in our leisure time, when volunteering, etc., and wish to spend more time in this social community, this may be a reason to leave working life early. In one of our conducted studies, where we examined what increases employees' possibility of working until an older age, the respondents in the survey stated that increased self-monitoring of the execution of work tasks, increased participation in the work community's decisions, increased participation in the organization of work, that we feel that we are heard and that we participate, that the manager's leadership is adapted to different needs in different ages, the need of management may change in different ages, the employee may need varying support in different ages, which should be taken into consideration. In our studies, we asked participants if they had experienced discrimination. Participants answered to the different grounds of discrimination, and it turned out that age was the most common ground for discrimination. The manager plays an important role here to ensure that employees do not feel discriminated against, but rather the opposite, that employees feel included, that they have social support and that they participate. But how does the manager perceive their employees? What attitudes do managers have toward their elderly employees? Well, there are numerous positive attitudes towards elderly employees. For example, elderly employees have experience in job competence, that elderly employees have life experience that's useful at work, that elderly employees are a support to younger and recently recruited employees, and that elderly employees are more thorough in their work. But there are also managers who have negative attitudes and stereotypical perceptions of their elderly employees. For example, they feel that elderly employees have more difficulty to take on changes, that elderly employees are more hostile towards new technology, that elderly employees have less education, that elderly employees are not as flexible in their thinking. There were even those that said, we rather want to support younger employees, but now we have laws and regulations, that means we also need to pay regard to the elderly employees. Experiencing that you are no longer a wanted employee in the organization because of your age means that you may not be as interested to work in an extended working life, but rather consider to leave working life and retire. The manager's attitudes towards elderly employees and whether they value their elderly employees plays an important role in whether the manager implements measures and actions to enable for 
and keep elderly employees within the organization. In an in-depth analysis, it was apparent that managers who themselves wanted to work until after 66 years of age, the following results were found. 33% stated that my employees want to work until 65 years of age or longer. 36% stated that it's important to keep employees until 65 years of age or longer. Among managers who themselves wanted to retire before 65 years of age, the following results were found. 14% stated that my employees want to work until 65 years of age or longer and 11% stated that it's important to keep employees until 65 years of age or longer. These results were irrespective of the manager's sex, age or business. What measures have we found in our studies to promote social inclusion, participation, support, trust and security? Work towards social inclusion, participation and security within the work community. Age and situation adapted leadership. In other words, precise description of work tasks, what is expected of the employee, goals, what routines and tasks should be prioritized, who the employee should turn to when needing support, etc. Eliminate unequal treatment and disregard. Pay attention to discrimination based on the grounds for discrimination. Information and participation in decisions, in appropriate extent, of course. A balance between work effort and reward. And work schedules that take the individual's social needs outside work into account. The third consideration when deciding whether to work in an extended working life or to retire early is related to social participation, which is associated with social age. If we experience social inclusion, sense of community, participation, support, trust and security in our workplace, this increases the chance that we want to stay at the workplace and in working life until an older age. This is apparent in the third area of consideration, whether to work in an extended working life or to retire early. However, if an employee experienced lack of social inclusion, maybe a manager with lack of leadership, no sense of community among co-workers, etc., if we do not enjoy the social situation at work, do not feel trust and support when we need it in work tasks, and if we do not feel valued or maybe even feel subjected to discrimination. This may be a reason not to stay in an extended working life, but rather retire and spend time in a socialist community with partner, family or friends. We may have other places we feel more socially included and valued, for example, when volunteering. This is why measures in the workplace are needed and a management with the ability to adapt their leadership in different situations and to employees of varying age. We need a supportive climate and to feel socially included in order to make working life sustainable for all ages. We have now reached the fourth consideration to keep working in an extended working life or to leave working life for retirement. This consideration regards the opportunity of meaningful, stimulating tasks, knowledge and developing activities. If an employee experiences their work tasks and meaningful, as meaningful and stimulating, that they can use their competence and knowledge in problem solving, enjoys and feels that work is developing, this will be an incentive to keep working and to stay in working life. However, if an employee experiences their work tasks and activities too repetitive and meaningless. Maybe they have executed the same task for 40 years and experienced no development, no way of using their knowledge and competence, etc. If the employee feels that they receive this meaningfulness in their leisure time through stimulating and interesting activities, this will be an incentive 
to leave working life and to retire. According to one of our studies, when examining what increases the possibilities of working until an older age, based on this part of the Swage model, the respondents stated the following. The opportunity of work tasks adapted to my ability in the last years of working life. Increased work satisfaction. Increased opportunity of development in work. Having opportunity of paying more attention to the work tasks I experience as interesting and important. New knowledge and competence based on my needs. All of these would, according to the employees participating in the study, increase the possibility of working until an older age. The measures we have found for motivation and safeguarding competence are as follows. An organisational culture that safeguards the employees' experience, skills and knowledge as production assets. Employees, especially elderly employees, are resources of work and life experience and knowledge. Make sure that this is valued to increase motivation. Areas of responsibility. In other words, having separate and clear responsibilities to make employees feel that they are specialists and that their competence is needed. Rotation and change of work tasks based on possibilities within the organisation. This, of course, is based on the actual possibility of changing work tasks within the organisation. But to avoid too repetitive tasks, it's a great idea to try to change the work tasks and increase rotation, also adapted to employees' different ages and abilities. Opportunity of competence development based on the individual's needs. Having opportunity of gaining new knowledge and competence, appropriate pedagogy, since we all learn differently in different ages is a good way to keep employees employable through working life. Opportunity of being included in development work and projects in the workplace is good for employees to feel included as well as competence development. Make sure employees who want to participate are allowed to despite their age. The fourth consideration when deciding whether to work in an extended working life or to retire early is related to cognitive age and ageing. To experience that our knowledge and competence is valued, that we do not stagnate but have constant development, that we feel satisfaction with our tasks and work and that we experience meaningfulness as well as stimulating tasks and activities. If an employee experiences all this in their workplace, they will feel valued and be more likely to want to stay and work in an extended working life. However, if an employee feels that they have no opportunity of competence development because elderly employees and their competence is not valued in the workplace, if the work tasks and activities feel tedious and not at all stimulating or interesting, and if the employee spends their leisure time with activities that feel more stimulating developing and meaningful. This will be an incentive for the employee to withdraw from working life and retire. Therefore, measures in the workplace are needed to ensure that employees feel that their work is stimulating and developing, satisfying and meaningful, as well as important to, to the organisation. An employee needs to feel that their work is valued, despite the title. It does not matter if you are a CEO or a window cleaner, we still need to experience that our competence is needed and that our contribution to the organisation is important.
We have examined different kinds of already existing support on the societal level in the quest for a sustainable working life for all ages. Namely, active systematic work environment management and the access to occupational health care. This has been an analysis of Sweden's total population. An active systematic work environment management in the workplace was statistically significant and associated with individuals being able to work until 65 years of age or longer. In other words, an active systematic work environment management is a great tool for a sustainable working life for all ages and to make more people be able to and want to work in an extended working life. The access to occupational health care was not statistically significant and associated with individuals being able to work until 65 years of age or longer. Maybe they work with different issues within occupational health care, but surely it's still a good tool in the quest for a sustainable working life for all ages and to make more people be able to and want to work in an extended working life. Tools and methods of operation to make the workplace sustainable for all ages. This could, for example, be to use the SWAGE model and systematic work environment management, together with available research and knowledge, as well as regulations and guidelines from work environment authorities. Interoperability and routines to examine working conditions based on predictors for a sustainable working life for all ages. To determine risks based on the predictors. Develop an action plan, timetable and share of responsibilities for measures. To adopt measures and to follow up and verify the impact of the measures. It is important that we weigh in the aged perspective in the systematic work environment management because we know that younger and elderly employees run a greater risk of being subjected to occupational injury. Employees aged 55 years and above constitute a large proportion of occupational injuries with deadly outcome, since hearing and eyesight, as well as response capacity and muscle strength, generally deteriorates with age. Therefore, this must be taken into account when determining risks in the workplace. Through the SWAGE model, all different parts of a sustainable working life are visible to us. We have an overview of the issues on different levels, unlike the scientists who examine the elephant. And we need to pay attention to all parts on all levels in order to make working life sustainable for all ages. It is of great importance to have the knowledge of what makes us sick and what makes us feel good in our work situation. However, individuals and workplaces are of course different, but the SWAGE model works as a map of the complexity to be able to navigate in the knowledge and find the right tools in the toolbox to make working life sustainable for all ages, on the individual level, on the organizational level and on the societal level. In short, to systematize, organize and provide an overview of the predictors associated with a sustainable working life for all ages. Most people want to experience passion in their life, and not specifically after leaving working life for pension. If people experience passion in their work, this increases the possibility of people being able to, feeling good about and wanting to work until an older age. There is an old saying that goes, when an old tree no longer bears fruit, it may be called barren, but we need to examine the soil surrounding the tree and make sure it gets sufficient nutrition. The same goes for employees. We need a secure and health-promoting work environment with the possibility of recuperation, social support and inspiration to grow. A work environment that's safe. We will keep working for a sustainable working life for all ages. And we think the SWAGE model can help us understand the complexity and what we need to work with together on different levels to make working life sustainable for all ages.
Read more about this wage model and a sustainable working life for all ages on our website, swage.org slash en dot html. The SWAGE model has been developed by Kjersti Nilsson, Professor in Public Health at Högskolan Kristianstad, Doctor and Docent in Public Health Epidemiology at the Division for Occupational and Environmental Medicine at Lund University, Doctor and Docent in Work Science at the Department of Work Science, Business Economics and Environmental Psychology at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. Thank you for watching.